Magician. Hey, you can see Dark Magician eighty four here, and welcome back to another top fifteen video. And um, this is one based on a question that uh, Sparkman uh, posted for my Q and A about a month ago, and that is um, about you know, outplays and comebacks. Um, so I'm basically doing my own version of a video that Webers 5 did several months back, um, listing the most notable moments um, where that happened, basically. Um, I mean, it's, it speaks for itself, so let's just dive in and kick this off. Number 15. Um, this dates back to one of the very early days of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, a match where I played Dark Magician against what I think was a generic Fiend deck. Um, now, this was quite early on in the October 2005 format, um, and it was round three of a locals. Um, I lost my first two rounds, um, and in this match I lost the first game and was trying to win the second one. And now, how I did it is very vague. Cause I don't remember how I did it. Um, hence why it's at the bottom. But I'm pretty sure there was a point in this game where he summoned an exiled force and I activated enemy controller on the sub and tributed one of my monsters to take control of said exiled force. Um, I, I suppose the guy could have called priority on its effect, but um, I guess neither of us thought of it at the time. Um, but yeah, doing so allowed me to make a comeback, I think, um, unless it was something different. All I remember though was being on either. 500 or 600 life points, or it might have been lower, and was able to do something to turn the duel around in my favour and win, and then win game three, and then the rest of my matches. Um, so yeah, like I said, I don't remember how I turned the duel around exactly, but it's still something that sticks in my mind. Number 14. Um, duel 2 of the match where I used my Destiny Heroes against Webber's Vibes in Dimian deck. Now this was something I talked about before, but, um, but it was still um, a notable comeback, even though this happened quite early on. Um, so what happened was, he set up a board of Endymion, Mythical Beast, Master Cerberus, Magician's Right Hand, and Necro Valley. Um, and that was all he had. Um, but, I was able to play around it, thankfully. Um, there's... Uh, I activated Destiny Draw, which um, forced the mandatory negate of Magician's right hand, and um, and then I normal summon Shadow Mist, activated Super Polymerization, fused Shadow Mist with Endymion, and made Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, which gained the attack points of uh, Master Cerberus, <clears throat> and then I was able to. Fusion summon destroy a Phoenix Enforcer and just um, attack over the Master Cerberus, hit him directly. Um, can't remember if I did anything else, but um, but still, despite his spells still being on the field, I was able to turn it around, and then um, he tried to activate Magister, and I used. Um, destroy a Phoenix Enforcer's effect right away um, to see if it would stop him. Um, and it seemed to be the right call and he 
scooped up. So, um, yeah, it was still a very fine comeback, and uh, also the first time I properly won a match against Endymion. So, it was a great achievement in my Yu Gi Oh life. Uh, Number 30 is another one involving Weber's 5, and this goes back to the Yu-Gi-Oh's 20th anniversary endurance, where we were on the second last uh, duel of the whole thing, where Dark Magician was facing Plunder Patrol, and um, yeah, I was in a pretty bad spot. I was dropped to 500 life points. He had a Bran and Moak out. Um, um, that's Booty and I think and Shipyard. All I had on the field was a Dark Magical Circle and all three Dark Magicians in my hand. Um, but my top deck did help, which was Magician Soul, so I activated it, sent Dark Magician Girl to Special Summon itself, and then I sent the circle for Magician Soul's effects to draw into Spell Book of Knowledge, which I then activated and drew into Eternal Soul and Starlight Road. Um, it wasn't ideal, really, because um, I wasn't sure this would keep me in the game. So I set them both and ended. Um, but it uh, seemed to work out, um, as he seemed to think that I drew into Mirror Force or something, or one of the other forms of it. He switched Moak, attacked with Bran, at least I think it was Bran he had. Um, I activated Eternal Soul, special summoned a Dark Magician from my hand, which took the hit. Um, then drew into Dark Burning Magic, which really wasn't what I needed, um, but I set it anyway, used Eternal Soul to bring back a Dark Magician. Um, and, um, and then he went to attack again, Dark Magician got destroyed, I then brought it back. Um, I guess he was still wary of a possible Mirror Force trap. Um, either that or, like he said in the video, he was dragging it out a bit because he wanted to use um, Dragoon Endymion. Um, but it was fine either way. I had a Dark Magician on the board by the time my turn ended, um, and then uh, came the big turnaround. I drew Monster Reborn, um, which I used to bring back Dark Magician Girl, then I activated Dark Burning Magic to wipe his field, um, but he then tried to get rid of my board by using Bran's effect to target Eternal Soul and banish it. I then chained Eternal Soul to Special A Dark Magician from my hand. So, yeah, chain resolved backwards, Eternal Soul got banished, his feel, uh, Dark Magician Girl, also got banished. Um, oh yeah, no, hold on. So, the chain was Dark Burning Magic, Activate Moak in response to Banish Dark Magician Girl. Activate Bran to Banish Eternal Soul. Then I chained Eternal Soul to Special Summon a Dark Magician. So then that all result went backwards and uh, I was actually relieved that Dark Burning Magic still went off even though Dark Magician Girl left the field. Then Eternal Soul tried to wipe out both Dark Magicians but I used Starlight Road to save the both of them and bring out Stardust Dragon, and um, I basically had game on board. Um, and with 500 life points remaining, um, and then of course I was at a 
huge unfair disadvantage against um, Dragoon and Dimion because I was on 500 and you know, it was in Dimion like how am I supposed to win against something that makes a board of negates with 500 life points left but that's another story um, although interestingly <coughs> regarding Starlight Road um, apparently I couldn't have actually special summoned Stardust Dragon uh, which is something I didn't know until later on you see if Starlight Road negates something that destroys two or more cards uh, that's in the graveyard in this case or, or in the graveyard or banished in this case Eternal Soul um, it, sure it still gets negated but it doesn't get destroyed and because it's not being destroyed I don't get to special summon Stardust Dragon from the extra deck um, very strange ruling. Shouldn't work like that, really. But um, oh well. I mean, it, it was fine either way because I still had game on board anyway with just the two dark magicians. Number twelve. Um, the elemental hero versus evil hero request duel from. 2009. Um, Timby was assisting me with this. He was playing my evil heroes. I was on elemental heroes and um, he overwhelmed my board with two copies of Malicious Fiend. Um, but luckily I was able to turn things around with a miracle fusion and bring out Shining Flare Wingman which had enough points to run over one of the malicious fiends and then um and then he couldn't get round it or at least he didn't draw anything that could get around it um uh, yeah it was just a fine memorable moment and um brilliant to see in this classic clash number 11 is yet Another game involving Webers 5, and this goes back to game 3 of our Skype match between Dark Magician and Endymion. And um, yeah, it's a tie between two things actually. The first was when I activated Nibiru and um, basically cleared his board. Um, or at least stopped him swarming. Um, so that was the first part of this comeback. The second part was using Solemn Strike on Magician Souls. And as you know, I normally save Solemn Strike for a bigger threat, but I felt maybe I should use it on Magician Souls to stop him drawing into cards that could turn the duel around in his favour and. Um, it turned out that it was the right call, and um, and luckily I had enough monsters to basically wipe out his life points. Shame that Dark Magician himself wasn't on the field, but Dark Magician the Dragonite was the next best thing. Number 10. Um, game 1 of the match where I used my Poker Knights against Light Swarms in a tournament. Uh, this goes back to 2017 um, when I faced um, that guy Elliot who was playing them. Uh, this was when I was playing, wanted to play my free god card decks in tournaments at the time. Um, and he did overwhelm me a little bit with um, his light swarms. Um, and, uh, see, I think I was stuck behind two Garrofs, um, if I remember correctly. And I was able to summon Castell, spin one of them away and attack over the other one. Um, and then he dropped Judgment Dragon, tried to bomb the field, and I activated Fiendish Chain to stop it in its tracks. Um, but that wasn't the best part of uh, this comeback. So 
on my turn I activated Brilliant Fusion, which was still legal at the time, sent Queen's Knight and Lazuli, made Jam Knight Seraphonite, used Lazuli to add back the Queen's Knight, then used the additional Normal Summon to Normal Summon Queen's Knight, and then for the regular Normal Summon I sacrificed Queen's Knight, Seraphonite, and Castell and Tribute Summoned Obelisk the Tormentor, which at the time I was playing instead of Slifer. Um, this just blew James's mind as well. Uh, James C. is like, what, seriously? Obelisk? And uh, I just attacked over the Judgment Dragon, which was very satisfying, and I was able to take the duel after that. Shame I lost the match. But it was still a great comeback, all the same. Number 9. Um, using Super Polymerization on Legendary Six Samurai Shen and Naturia Barkion. Now, this dates back to the local tournament that I won with my Legendary Hero deck. And one of those matches was against Six Samurais, which was like the worst matchup for me because Shen and Beast exist. Um, I was able to take it to a third game though and um, I was overwhelmed by Shen and the Churia Barkion but then I did a really cool play and it still sticks in my mind. Um, I used super polymerization, fused the Churia Barkion, which by the way is a dragon synchro with Legendary Six Samurai Shen and made Dragon Knight Drake a request. Um, it was just so epic. Um, and it was legit because this was like. It was one of the few ways to basically get rid of Shen back then. Um, and. And I was able to win the duel some point after that um, and the match. It was just really epic. Number eight, uh, using card destruction for game twice. Um, so yeah, it's sort of a tie between two people, but um, it's the same victory. And uh, this dates back to two games that were had in GOAT format, like literally. Um, back in 2005. Um, now, the first one I did by accident, because I didn't realise how many... Uh, uh, that, uh, one of these guys uh, didn't have a lot of cards left in the deck. Um, yeah. yeah, it was the first time I did it, so uh, I did it because I wanted I needed a better hand, really, because uh, um, the guy was in a strong winning position. Um, I can't remember what his board was, but um, I know I wasn't going to win through other ways. Well, at least not before I played Card Destruction. So I played it just to try and get a better hand, but um, I inadvertently decked him out. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. And then later on I did the same thing um, uh, to my other friend, um, which um, was intentional. Um, and normally, uh, like I've said before, I don't like deck out strategies and I don't want to resort to it, but at that point, I was desperate. Um, I don't think I was in a winning position otherwise. Um, as, um, I think he he had a superior board. I couldn't say what it was. We're talking almost 19 years ago. Um, bear in mind. And um, I noticed that he didn't have a lot of cards left in his deck. So, again... I activated card destruction um, just to deck him out. So yeah, it was a cheap way to win and make a comeback, but um, it works. What can I say? Um, 
although I'm against deck art strategies, um, I feel like um, it's still fine to do it if like you're desperate and have literally no other way to win. And that was the case both times. <clears throat> Number seven. Um, Dark Magician winning against ABCs. Um, this was against James C's ABCs. Um, now I can't remember if this game happened in 2017 or 18. I'm I'm gonna guess late 2017. Um, as yeah, what happened was uh, he had raw decree on the field which he sided against me which was really infuriating because it turned off eternal soul and magician's navigation and by other um, traps that I commonly use and this put me in a bad spot and I was just struggling um, I don't think Dragon Buster was on the field at that point but, um, but one thing I do know is that I desperately needed to draw Twin Twisters. I was like, please give me Twin Twisters! And the heart of the cards prevailed, you might say, and I drew into it, played it, got rid of Raw Decree, and I was able to use Eternal Soul, and uh, basically turn the duel around, and uh, I... Well, I can't remember how I did it exactly afterwards, but I was able to just win the match from that point, all because of this top decked Twin Twisters. <clears throat> Number six, um, game two of Elemental Heroes versus TG Photon Stun, played by Neo Nexodus. Um, now this was the last match we played during my fourth Margate trip. Um, yeah, it was a casual game. Uh, he was one game up, um, <clears throat> and um, I got him to very low life points, but he was able to overwhelm my board, and uh, I just couldn't get over it for a while. Um, I had a bunch of heroes in my hand, but no way to fuse them. Like, literally all I needed was polymerization or miracle fusion, and I was good. Now, eventually I did draw one, uh, Apollo, that is, and Fusion summoned Absolute Zero, and uh, he activated um, Bottomless, I think? It was either Bottomless or Torrential. <coughs> so that destroyed Absolute Zero, but Absolute Zero destroyed his monsters, and then I just simply normal summoned Wild Heart. Um, <coughs> to which case he went Fuck! And Ojama the Bomb laughed, and I attacked the game. <coughs> and all he had on the board was um, Torrential Tribute and Solemn Warning. Um, mind you, he wouldn't have had enough life points to activate Solemn Warning anyway, but um, yeah, Wild Heart helped me make that comeback. It was a very simple comeback. But still a comeback nonetheless, which is very memorable. Number five, Dark Magician Ritual Mode against Gokies. Um, I'm pretty sure this was the last time I faced Brian's Gokies. Um, so this dates back to a more recent game, um, which was like two and a half years ago at this point. Um, uh, and this was when I was starting to really not like playing against Gokis purely because Power Load Ogre and Finishing Move exist. Um, and um, I think his life points were untouched, or at least barely touched at all, and I was getting overwhelmed by <coughs> Power Load Ogre. Um, now, I did have a plan to get rid of it though, um, which was uh, to bring out Magician of Chaos, which I did, and then crush Magician of Chaos into the power load, 
Um, take the damage. Um, I was on pretty low life points, but luckily I still had enough to stay in the duel and use the effect of Magician of Chaos to special summon Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon from my hand. Um, so this would have allowed me to make that huge comeback. Um, and I was just simply going to attack the Power Load Ogre just to get rid of it, but then I noticed he had Goki Guts on the field in defence mode, which had a nice juicy defence of zero, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> um, and then uh, Morley saw what I was going to do, and he was like, oh, no. <laughs> so, um... I didn't want to do this, but I had to. I just simply attacked <clears throat> into the Goki Guts, doing the double piercing damage, which basically wiped out Brian's life points. Um, so, yeah, it, it was just a good opportunity to win the duel, as well as make an epic comeback. Um, I feel like that would have been the right call, because... Brian was probably going to do something to turn the duel around in, in his favour and win anyway, so it's just as well I did that. Number... oh, not 11. 4. Exodia against Melfi. Duel 2. Um, yeah, this is one of the games I had with Emma where I was playing Exodia against her Melfis. Um, and she did win game one, and almost won game two. As, uh, she was just dismantling my board left, right and centre, and I was on very low life points. And I did have four pieces of Exodia in my hand, so I needed to draw the last piece in order to win. As it was my only hope of winning, and... Uh, Sure enough, I drew into the last piece. Uh, I was like, yes, Exodia, obliterates! <laughs> so that was just an incredible comeback, which uh, took it to a third game. That was just awesome. Number three, a game two of Dark Magician Hero against Dark World. Um, a match I had with Davies 12 years ago. Um, now, I don't remember who won the match. I'm, I think he did, but I definitely won game two. And this was something I've brought up a few times before. But, yeah, um, his life points were quite low, but he was able to make a board of three graphers, you know, Dragon Lord of Dark World, and... Uh, yeah, that was enough to OTK me, and that's what he went for, except I had my favourite hand trap, Battle Fader, which stopped him OTKing me, so he ended his turn, and then I drew into Miracle Fusion, which I activated, Fusion summoned Shining Flare Wingman, and attacked over one of the graphers, and burned out what was left of his life points. Yes! Uh... Three red hot favourite cards of mine just won me that game. Battle Fader, Miracle Fusion, Shining Flare Wingman. Um, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I still lost the match, which is annoying. But it was still an epic moment from my Yu Gi Oh! life um, just doing that. Number two uh, is another game I had with Emma. Um, Game 3 of Yuya vs. Light Swarms. Um, and I think at this point we're on low life points, but she had a board of Judgment Dragon, Cybus, Quantum Dragon, and Garroth, I think. Or was it Raiden? It might have been Raiden. Either way, she had a pretty strong board, even with just... Um, Judgment Dragon and uh, Cyber's Quantum Dragon by themselves. Um, <clears throat> so it didn't seem likely I'd uh, win considering I was playing 
a Highlander deck, but however, I was able to uh, do something which isn't easy to do, and that was Fusion Summon Rune Eyes Pendulum Dragon, um, which could at least get round the quantum, because uh, obviously one of its effects, uh, Rune Eyes' effects, is that during the turn it's Fusion Summoned, it's unaffected by card effects. Um, and it was able to attack at least twice, uh, since I used a low level spell caster to do it. Um, I think I fusion summoned it with Trump Witch's effect. Um, can't remember exactly, but either way, um, yeah, that turned things around for me. Um, yeah, she assumed I'd crash into the Judgment Dragon, but based on what her life points were, I didn't need to, so I just simply attacked the Quantum Dragon and destroyed it, um, because Quantum's effect wouldn't work on it that turn, and then I attacked Raiden, and I just simply won the duel right there and then. Um, yeah. and, uh, I'd, I'd like to think that Weber's 5 was impressed that I did that. <laughs> And finally, in at number one, the greatest comeback or outplay that I did was against George's Rockets, also with my Highlander Yuya deck. Um, now, he was in a very strong position anyway, with Boral Oat Savage Dragon and Boral End Dragon, and I was just uh, fighting for survival, really. Um, just holding him off. Luckily, I think I was able to bait out all of Borrowed Savage Dragon's negates, although um, a ball end made things difficult, but uh, and rather annoyingly, I had no way to get rid of the ball end. Um, I think my only hope, pro I think at that point, was probably Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, or Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon, but even then that wouldn't do much, since Boral End can't be destroyed by battle. Um, but then it got to a point where I was like, oh wait, I don't need to overcome Boral End. Because um, <clears throat> luckily, uh, earlier on, I did plenty of damage to his life points earlier, and um, I know he was on, like, somewhere under 2,500 uh, that was left, um, and I knew what I had to do, but I needed to bait in a gate from Boral End, which I was able to do, I can't remember what I did it with, um, might have been Odd Eyes Dissolver, actually, or it was either Odd Eyes Dissolver or Odd Eyes Synchron, um, and he used Bottle End to negate, I was like, okay, cool, um, that was a bait, and then I Xyz summoned Dark Rebellion, Xyz Dragon, now, even though I couldn't use his effect on Bottle End, Borrowed Oat Savage Dragon was still fair game, so I activated his effect, cut Borrowed Oat Savage Dragon's attack points in half, and gained what it lost, and then I just simply attacked over the Borrowed Oat Savage Dragon and took the win. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that was just amazing. Um, unfortunately, the Yuya deck would then lose against Emma's Melfi's, because this was in the character deck endurance, but still, didn't matter. Um, it was a worthy victory by my Yuya character deck, and um, yeah, this was definitely the closest and tightest game that me and George ever had. Um, so, yeah, it was just incredible that it could have gone either way. Um, well, only because I was just trying to stall and survive, um, <clears throat> but luckily I survived long enough to make the
best comeback ever. And yeah, that was it. Those are my top 15 uh, outplays and comebacks that I've ever done. Um, are there any that you guys have um, uh, that are worth mentioning? Let me know in the comments down below. And on that note, I will catch you guys later. See ya. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the Dark Retrition YouTube channel.